This is Jim McVeigh, he was the OC in the jail, the last OC. We walk free from this prison camp, as have our comrades before us, proud Republicans, unbowed and unbroken. In this council, um, there are people, both elected representatives and indeed members of staff, who are former members of the British Security Forces. I am going to treat them with the same respect as I would expect them to treat me. Jim McVeigh was part of the IRA's war, twice caught with bombs, twice jailed, twice compromised by informers, by men the IRA later executed. Now in his long journey from war to peace, he's to become a councillor and Sinn Féin's next leader at the City Hall. It's a step out of the hidden places of the IRA organisation into a very public political role. You're in no way ashamed of your IRA past? Not in the least. You know, and I don't want to be uh, blasé about that or indeed provocative. Um, but no, I'm not ashamed. You're uh, proud of your IRA past? I am, yes. And I'm proud of the people that I serve with. And I'm particularly the people who I serve with who lost their lives, uh, friends of mine. And um, there's not a day goes by that I don't think of those people. And I would say that's part of the reason why I'm involved in political struggle, because as far as I'm concerned, our struggle still continues. It's a different method of struggle, but it's still the same objectives. Just a week ago, Sinn Féin chose hunger striker Pat Sheehan to fill Gerry Adams' seat at Stormont. And now the news of Jim McVeigh's new role at the City Hall. Men for a long time identified with the IRA, with what was called armed struggle have turned a corner. Today, Jim McVeigh is looking in on a new world, a place in politics that he believes has changed and is still changing. He knows that because of his background, there will be those who will watch his every step. And so he's trying to measure every word, determined, he says, to reach out beyond his own community. We hope that you know, people like ourselves be judged on the basis of the work that we do. And um, we're in here to work with other parties. We're in here to, to... I'm as much interested in the interest of people on the Shankill um, or Sandy Row or, or, or the village as will be with people on the Falls or, um, or the markets or the Strand. You, you might know, have so. a job of work trying to persuade them of that, mind you. And yeah. I, I, you've said previously that people need to look beyond the IRA headline. Yeah. No, of course. I mean, I'm not, I'm not naive enough to believe that um, that there aren't going to be difficulties or, or people won't be suspicious, um, particularly when uh, some people are mixing it and, and trying to stir up fears. Not far from the City Hall at the Healing Through Remembering project, they're exploring ways of dealing with Northern Ireland's violent past, trying to find answers to the many difficult questions. The project director knows both Jim McVeigh and Pat Sheehan and says they're important voices in the debate. Some of the conversations that have happened in, in those rooms that I've been party to um, are some of the most mature debates I've heard around, around our past and around how we need to deal with it to take it forward into the future. And it's not something to be scared of, it's something that we can all learn from. Inside the Loyalist community, they're watching these political moves and they see them as a confirmation of the IRA's peace. What's happening has also got loyalists thinking about their own next steps and how they get their voices heard inside the political arena. Do you think you have a better relationship and a better dialogue with Republicans such as Jim McVeigh and Pat Sheehan? Do you have a better relationship and a better conversation with them than you have uh, with unionist elected politicians? Unfortunately, that would be true. Uh, we sit down, we talk about the issues, working class problems within loyalist and Republican areas. And uh, although in many areas uh, unionism doesn't work with loyalism, there's areas like Lisbon where it works very well. But we need to have it across the province. Pat, as many of us know, is a former prisoner. He's also a former hunger striker. He's a former county player. Still a hurler, he tells me. <laughs> So while Republicans have worked out their next moves, Loyalists haven't. They're lost in the peace, not sure what's round the corner, not sure whether to stand themselves in politics or try to find a home in one of the unionist parties. There's, there's a lot of pressure being put on, on Loyalists to do exactly that, to be, to, to be a, an identity on their own. Uh, and there's arguments for that and against it. A lot of colleagues of mine would prefer that option, but I would rather link up 
with the union and try to strengthen it that way. And if that doesn't work and people are not prepared to accept us for what potential we have, then we might have to look at the other options. And stand against them in the election rather than with them? That goes against my unionism uh, and my loyalism. But that, if that has to be, then it would have to be. There are others lost in the peace. The Republican dissidents behind this recent attack on police in West Belfast. Sinn Féin's new man at the City Hall says they're going nowhere and they should stop. The people I know who disagree, the friends of mine or former comrades of mine who, who disagree with our strategy, have, enough, have had enough sense not to become involved in them groups because they know that for the most part, with a few notable exceptions, there are a bunch of misfits, you know? You describe them as head cases. Yeah, yeah I think that would be a fair description of, of many, and if not most of them. Um, you know, there are a mixture of people who are, in some cases, adventurers, some cases, egotists. Um, without doubt, there are criminal elements involved, and um, and without doubt, there are agents and provocateurs involved as well. Strong words from a former man of war. He has chosen a new path, and there are those who see his arrival into politics as a confirmation of the peace, and as proof that the IRA war is really over. Brian Rowan. UTV Live tonight.